time to build a gaming PC. When it comes to building your own computer, it's surprisingly easy and you still get all the benefits of getting the exact PC you want. Get yourself a decent sized workspace and a Phillips screwdriver and we're good to go. Start by pulling the case out of the box. Unscrew the side panel and pop it off so we have some room to work. Inside, you'll find the accessories like the hardware along with the power supply. This case comes with it pre-installed, but it's easy enough to do yourself. Just make sure the fan is pointed in a direction where it can pull in air. In this case, it's mounted on top, but some PCs have it on bottom. There are guides to slide it in, and then it's as simple as using the four included screws to tighten it down. While we're here, grab the bag of hardware that came in the case and pull out the small brass standoffs. Sometimes these are pre-installed, but it's as simple as screwing them in for whatever motherboard you have. In this case, it's Micro ATX. If you have any doubts, you can test fit the motherboard to measure where the screws need to go. Here, we need six standoffs. For now, set the case aside and pull out the motherboard. It's wrapped in an anti-static bag, so be careful to pull it out by grabbing it by the plastic pieces and set it down on the cardboard box. There are also a few accessories included that you'll need, like the SATA cables and I.O. shield. This is installed in the rear of the case. It can be a little fiddly, but just pop it into place with the audio ports on bottom. Before we continue, let's take a quick look around the motherboard. Basically everything in the build connects here. For example, this gray socket in the middle is where the processor is installed. To the right of that are the RAM slots for memory, and on the bottom are the PCIe slots, which is where we'll be installing the graphics card a bit later on. On the bottom corner, you'll find two of the four SATA ports to connect hard drives and SSDs. Most of your ports are on the back side, which will be where you'll plug stuff in at the rear of the case. Right beside the RAM slots is the 20 plus 4 pin connector, which delivers the main power for the board. There's also a smaller 4 pin connector near the CPU socket, which provides power for the processor. Speaking of, let's crack open our CPU. Inside, you should find the processor itself, along with a heatsink and fan. This is essentially the heart of the build, and it's fairly fragile. This AMD chip has lots of delicate pins on the back, which you want to be careful with. If any of these get bent, you're in trouble. If you look at the bottom of the heatsink, you'll see a thin layer of thermal paste. This is fine to use as is for this build, but try not to touch it before applying. Pull the lever by the socket back and find the tiny gold triangle on the corner of the CPU. This matches a corresponding triangle on the socket, so gently set the processor down and pull the lever to lock it into place. Now it's time to install the heatsink. Set it down square on the processor, and for AMD, there's a latch to press down that locks everything in place. Grab the 4-pin fan connector and connect it to the CPU power on the motherboard and that's it. The CPU is installed and we're ready to move on. Now grab the memory. This is super easy to install. You'll see a notch about 2 thirds down. This is what you'll want to line up on the slot on the motherboard and firmly press it into place until it clicks. That's all there is to it. Now it's time to grab the case and drop the motherboard in on the brass standoffs we installed earlier. Just make sure all of the ports are properly lined up with the IO shield around back. Grab the small screws out of the bag of hardware that came with the case and screw the board into place, starting at the corners and making sure you tighten the board down nicely. Flip the computer back upright and we're well on our way to having a working gaming PC. Next up, let's install our SSD. Since this is smaller than a normal hard drive, you'll want to mount it to the bottom of the case instead of using one of the drive cages, but you've got plenty of room to install multiple drives in this case. Now it's time to start cabling. First up, grab the cable running from the rear fan and plug it into the system fan header on the motherboard. Next, you should find a 4-pin CPU connector from the power supply. Hook it up to the motherboard on the top left. Next, grab the long 20 plus 4-pin cable and plug that into the corresponding connector on the board. While we're here, let's power the SSD, which has two connectors on the end. Grab a SATA cable from the power supply and hook it up using the larger of the two ports on the drive. Next, there's the SATA data cable that came with the motherboard. You'll see it has a notch on one end, so it only goes in one way. Hook one end of the cable into the motherboard SATA port and the other into the SSD. It's as simple as that. Going back to the cables inside the case, you should see an AC97 and HD audio connector. Grab the HD audio and plug it into the matching plug on the board. You'll also see a USB cable for the front ports on the case. It's the same story here, and as before, it only goes in one way thanks to a knocked out pin. Along the bottom, you'll also find the front panel connectors. These are a bit fiddly, but they're marked on the board as well as in the manual. Just plug these in individually, making note of which side is positive and negative. It's easy to mix up, so if you have any problems turning the PC on later, this is a great place to double check. Grab your screwdriver and remove the two PCI slots on the back of the case to make room for the graphics card. Like the motherboard, this comes in an anti-static bag, and while it isn't incredibly sensitive, you should still handle it by the plastic instead of the board. This is a fairly small card, but they're typically pretty similar. You'll find your video outputs on the rear and the PCI connector on the bottom, which connects into the motherboard. Slide it into the top slot on the board until it clicks into place, then screw it in to keep things secure. Most power supplies have a 6-pin PCIe power connector, but since this doesn't, we'll need a Molex to PCI adapter. Molex might be a weird looking connector, but it'll get the job done. Connect two cables into the adapter, and then plug it into the 6-pin on the graphics card, and it's powered and ready to go. At this point, we're nearly done. Especially with a budget bulb like this, cables aren't going to be the neatest thing in the world, but don't worry about that just yet. Grab a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, and plug everything in. If all is good, it should come right to life when you hit the power button. 
If not, unplug and run through your cables and connections to make sure everything is right. If it doesn't automatically go to the BIOS, hit delete or F9 on the keyboard to quickly run through to make sure everything is present and working correctly. As long as everything looks good, you can turn it off and clean up what cables you can and you'll be ready to throw a copy of whatever operating system you'd like on it. Congrats, you built yourself a gaming PC. If you need any more info on the parts I used, I did a video about that as well as the performance. And if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, definitely consider subscribing for more videos like this. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.